So hey, it's Sterling Valentine. Welcome to your Membership Sites Masterclass. You know, membership sites are often misunderstood. They are really powerful when used correctly. Uh, unfortunately, they are another one of these black holes of time, energy, and money that if you don't do them correctly, uh, you know, you'll, you'll hear about the person who's been working on their membership site for three years, you know, and uh, I don't have any members yet, but I'm putting a lot of content together. So uh, it's another one of those really, really powerful uh, techniques on, in, you know, online internet marketing that it's kind of like playing with fire. If you get close enough, you can really get warm. If you get too close, you can get burnt. So I want to make sure that you guys, if you decide to take on doing a membership site, I'll give you my masterclass level understanding from my perspective of how I've been able to use them effectively and I help you make the decision, A, whether or not you will actually want to move into doing a membership site, and then B, if you do, what's the best way to do it and get it done quickly, easily, effectively, profitably, you know, sidestepping all of those pitfalls, but still getting the benefit out of it, which is really what we want. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, you know, as, as in all of the Masterclass series, I want to teach you some advanced strategies. I'll try to cover some basics, of course, <clears throat> but I want to cover some advanced strategies on creating easy, instant membership sites so that you can do two things. Not only generate revenue, which is, hey, we're all looking to make money online, but also to increase customer value. And after I wrote customer value, I kind of thought, well, that's sort of a double play on words. Does it mean increase customer value? meaning the value of your customers to you, you know, your future total value of your customer, how much dollars they spend, how many dollars they spend with you over their lifetime. Or when I wrote that, did I mean increase value that your customers receive from you, right? And I couldn't figure out which one I meant until I realized I actually meant both. So I don't know if that was a brilliant or just a, you know, uh, a brain blip there, but that's actually what we want to do. We want to increase value going from us towards our customers by giving them membership access so that they feel more value from us. And that's what it's all about, delivering value to the community that we chose to serve, you know. But then also, by doing so, by delivering value that way, down the pike, you know, towards them, then that also can increase your customer value, meaning dollars that your customers spend with you. And we're not talking about just turning your customers upside down and shaking them out for every dollar they have in their pockets. We mean trying to give them more opportunities to spend time and energy and money with you that helps them towards their goal. So as long as you keep value in mind and try to take care of your, you know, your members or your customers, uh, I think you'll be in a great position. I think membership sites are a great way to do that. Let's take a look at our bullets for tonight. We're going to talk about how to set up a membership site for free in just a few minutes. This is really uh, exciting stuff. If you haven't heard about this stuff, it's going to blow your mind. If not, uh, if you already have, then you're still going to get a lot of great stuff out of this masterclass tonight. We're also going to talk about how to make money from selling memberships, how to get free content for your membership sites. A lot of stuff I haven't heard taught before, uh, that particular thing about free content. How to get people lined up to join your membership site, and how to keep your members month after month. Of course, I'm also going to try to stick in some other things where I think of them, but the definition of these master classes is some quick basics, but then some real world, street tested, battle proven, master level, uh, you know, tips, tricks, ideas, knowledge, skills that I can give you from my perspective after you've been doing this for over six years. So uh, let's get into it. First of all, how do we set up a membership site for free in just a few minutes? Well, uh, you'll notice that there are a couple key words here free and uh, just a few minutes. So we talk about time and cost, right? And it's very important that if you're going to pursue doing a membership site, and I'm not sure if that's for everybody to even do, or, you know, it's certainly not for everybody to do up front. So you might want to, you know, you might benefit from considering holding off until you get a good revenue stream from, let's say, list building and affiliate marketing, which were two different master classes we've taught previously. But if it's the right time in your business, you've got a list already, you're starting to generate some affiliate revenue. Uh, you're looking at some other ways to provide value to your customers and to your subscribers, then once it's time, how do you minimize the amount of time it costs you and the amount of money it costs you? So let's get into that, and hopefully I'll be able to help you. So first of all, uh, there are many membership scripts or programs. So you're, what you're doing is looking for a script or a, a program or sometimes you'll see it's called software. But basically what it is is in the box already comes this uh, management system. Sometimes it's called a CMS, which equals content 
management system. And it already has all of the tools that you need, the pages, the uh, front end and the back end, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so the very first thing I want to see you guys understand is do not have somebody build you a membership site script from scratch because there are way too many off-the-shelf options already that you can use and just basically install in a couple seconds plug and play and you're ready to go and I'll show you one or two of them right now so uh, every once in a while I'll hear somebody say well I have a co developer a coder who's charging me by the hour to build me a script so that I can have a membership site uh, -uh don't do that because there's already stuff out there and money loves speed so you want to you know, minimize your expense of time and money whenever possible. Let me quickly cover front end versus back end real quick because I think it's important. So the front end is where your customers or members will, will visit. They'll log in. Now, you know, you've seen a membership site before. They'll log in. They'll participate in your site, whatever they're doing in the site, whether it's accessing content or community, whatever they're doing, that's in the front end. The back end or the admin area, that's where you go in and kind of like in the Wizard of Oz where the wizard was behind the curtain that's where you pull the levers that's where you move stuff uh, so if you want to upload a new file into your members area you would go in as an administrator in the back end and then move things if you wanted to change the logo or change the front page or change some text on there you control that from the back end or the admin area sometimes they call that also the control panel not to be confused with C panel or control panel in your actual website that's something different uh, and if you have any questions, just get me at sterlinghelp.com and I'll explain it to you better. But I'm talking specifically about the control panel or the back-end admin area of your membership site. Uh, so that's front-end versus back-end. Content management system is some kind of, again, as I said, out-of-the-box before, out-of-the-box solution that already allows you to manage content. And in this case, you also want to be managing members as well. So sometimes CMS scripts often can double as membership management scripts as well and that's one of the solutions I want to give you tonight so there are plenty of expensive custom solutions and I'm not saying that spending money on expensive custom solutions is necessarily a bad thing because there are certain people that this is a perfect fit for in fact using uh, you know cheap or free off-the-shelf parts may actually not fit but for the majority of people, especially starting out to do your first membership site, there are many scripts that you can use that are free. So even if you just Google free membership script or free membership site, or free membership software, you're going to get a ton of these. Um, here is my suggestion. Of all the things I've checked out, I still feel that the best single greatest combination of membership management and content management can be found by using our old friend WordPress and WordPress is typically been known as a blog platform so for those of you who don't know what a blog is I'll quickly give you a definition of that so you're up to speed a blog is any website where you can post a article or a comment or some kind of uh, journal entry so if you've ever seen somebody say uh, you know today's January 1st and here's my post for January 1st and then people can comment on the bottom. That's a blog. You've probably seen a hundred of them. But the blogging platform, the back end that builds your WordPress site for you is very, very powerful. And it can be turned into a membership site very easily. So you can get WordPress installed instantly for free. Let me move some of this stuff uh, out of the way here. You can get WordPress installed instantly for free from almost any host by looking for something called Fantastico inside of your cPanel of your website. So we talked about, and that's not, that did a little autocorrect there, it's not channel, it's actually cPanel. So cPanel and the control panel of your membership site are two different things. Complicated sounding but actually easier to understand. So whenever you set up a hosting account, that means you have a domain name such as yourname.com. The hosting company itself provides cPanel access to you. And that means that you can go in the back of your site. It's an administrative area for your entire hosting account. You can move files around in your hosting account. This is before you've installed any scripts of any kind. There's no WordPress, there's no member management, content management. Every hosting account should come with cPanel access. What if you want to have uh, an email such as uh, 
you know, Joe at your domain, dot, you know, your name.com. How do you create that? Well, you go to your C panel and you create your emails and all, you know, it's the, it's the sort of the, uh, captain's bridge, you know, the ship control panel, uh, control area for your entire site. No matter what you are putting on your site, all sites have a C panel. That's different than a control panel of a membership site because different things have different control panels. You know, different cards have different dashboards. It's the same kind of thing. So hopefully that unconfused anybody who was confused by that stuff and didn't further confuse you. But you go into your C panel of your website and not Fantastic, but Fantastico. And you find an icon called Fantastico. Fantastico is like a robot installation program. You tell it what little programs you want installed on your site and it will automatically do it. So for example, if you want a help desk installed, you can look for something like OS Ticket, which is what we use. If you want a blog, which remember we can use a blog also as a membership site, but it doesn't know that it's just installing a blog for you. You can install WordPress and this is all one button or one click access. So if you don't understand any of this, just call your hosting company up and say, get me into my cPanel so that I can use Fantastico to install WordPress for me. Now why go through the trouble of cPanel, Fantastico and then WordPress? Because WordPress itself is hundreds of files and pages and folders. So the only alternative to having Fantastico installed for you is to go and download all those files and then upload them all yourself. What a nightmare. It's really, really difficult. So it's really great to have a little robot installer like Fantastico that says, hey boss, what would you like me to install on your, your uh, hosting account right now? Would you like WordPress? No problem. I can do that. Where do you want it? What's the username and password you want to use? And then you hit the button and it goes and finds the files, uploads the files, installs the files, makes sure it's configured properly, and then says, okay, all finished, ready for you to just use it. So Fantastico, even though this sounds complicated, this is actually just one or two steps compared to the hundreds of steps it might take you to install WordPress by itself. So just for simplicity's sake, you want to go to your hosting account, go to cPanel, and usually, by the way, that is at, let's say, www.yourdomain, oops, yourdomain.com slash cPanel. Then once you're in there, you look for Fantastico. And then you install WordPress with one click. Okay, so cPanel, Fantastico, WordPress. Now that gets you a blog installed. But the thing about WordPress that really makes it helpful and valuable as a membership site is that WordPress is open source. That means it's free. We like the word free, right? And it is the code that makes it is open, meaning, uh, for example, Microsoft Windows or uh, Mac OS, those are closed codes. You and I can't go in and just reprogram Windows if we want to. We can't just get the code to Windows. That's proprietary or protected code that Microsoft keeps hidden. Sort of like a secret sauce formula for a you know, tomato sauce company. You don't know it and you can't get it. But open source means that all of the code is free to look at, use, tweak, mess around with, change, edit, whatever you want to do. And because of that open source, there's an entire open source community and they create what are called plugins. Now plugins are little mini scripts that do certain functions. So for example, if you wanted to have a calendar on your blog, you would just find a calendar plugin, right? Or an image gallery, let's say you have you were a photographer and you wanted to put a lot of photos up on your blog, they have image gallery plugins, many plugins, many calendar plugins. In fact, there are entire lists of all of the different plugins. There's hundreds of plugin categories, and many times there's hundreds of plugins within that particular category. There's a whole bunch of image gallery plugins. You can have all different kinds of image galleries. And again, one of the best things about all this stuff is most of it's free. Now, they do have commercial or expensive, you know, I'm sorry, commercial or paid plugins, but 
you don't need them right at first getting started. And remember, you want to get started quickly, easily, and inexpensively. This is key. So when in doubt, don't spend money because you can get something going very, very inexpensively without having to spend money. And some of you may be tempted, well, I want the best, darling, and I don't want to start off on a weak position. I want to have a, the most powerful. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I used to do that too. But I found that what happens is, you know, you can find a real basic bare bones script, for example, a membership plugin, and be off and running, you know, be up and running within an hour. And it doesn't have to have all the features that another one has, but you get going. Remember, one of my favorite sayings is, done is good. And another one is, get the right things right. Get the right thugs right. No, this autocorrect is a real entertaining uh, phenomenon. Get the right things right at the right time. So what does that mean to get the right things right at the right time? Well, the right time right now is to just get a membership site going quickly, easily, and expensively. Therefore, a quickie membership plugin, something cheap and easy and effective or free, is the right thing to do at the right time. You don't want to overburden yourself with some very, very, very complicated membership script or plugin for WordPress that will take you six months to learn and have all these different features. 90% of those features you won't need up front, but what it will do is slow you down to a crawl and push farther and farther away the day that you actually launch this site. And the, the most important quality of your site is that it's going to be live, right? That's why I say done is good. Done is maybe not perfect, maybe not the best possible one it can be, but done is good enough because once you get going and get some members, then you can add functions and features and, you know, download your member database and re-upload it to a, a better script or something later. So believe me, the right thing you want to get right is to get it out there and get it going. You don't have to get it perfect, but you do have to get it started. So you want something easy and free, and you can just Google because there's so many of them. Google free membership plugin WordPress. Now I'm going to put that like this. You don't need to put it in quotes. But so just Google these words, free membership plugin from WordPress. And you can also check out commercial plugins. And usually all you need to do is delete the word free. And both the free and the commercial ones will come up. And I, the reason I hesitate to recommend any particular one is because it's such a moving target. It moves so fast that by the time I might recommend one, and somebody watches this video, maybe it's it's already old or it's changed or it's no longer functional or something. I've learned over the years not to uh, lock in to a point in time in particular uh, recommendation because later on people will go for it and it may not be there. But what I can tell you is that there are many versions of it that are free. There are a couple expensive ones too that you might want to graduate up to uh, eventually, like Wishlist, Member, and I know these have been around for years, um, DAP, which is Digital Access Pass, uh, and I think there's a couple others, um, but these are the ones that I've, I've had, uh, you know, exp extensive experience with, and I know that they're solid. A good small lower end one that uh, is not necessarily free, but only costs a monthly uh, charges from a company called WM WPMU Dev. So if you look up WPMU Dev online, they are a WordPress. WordPress something something MU uh, development company and they offer for I think like $35 a month or something access to over a hundred different plugins one of which is a very cool uh, not too complicated membership plugin but again these are just recommendations I'm not not going to tell you this one is the one you should get or that one because you know in a month from now after this recording they could have three new ones out five of the ones I recommended could already be gone but the point is Easy and free and quick is the best. Quickly, easy, and inexpensively. And really, all you need to do is be able to create members, right? You know, uh, allow allow access to different files, right? Uh, the, you know, password protect things. It's not really too complicated. There, there's not a lot of high-end features that you need up front. So you don't need to go really, really in-depth. And I know I keep, you know, singing that same song, but believe me, one of the largest problems I see with, with students, especially in the membership site area, is over 
complication. Beware of overcomplication. So it's very easy for me to say, go grab a simple, easy, quickie one. But most of the time, people nod their head, they say yes, and then they go and they get caught up in the shopping and they find some crazy. Well, this one says it can make a hologram bounce off the moon. And, like, you know, you don't need that up front, but most people will go for it anyway. So I say be careful because anything that costs you time in between now and when you launch, not only is it putting off you being able to serve your customers and maybe get revenue, it's also lessening and lessening the likelihood that you'll ever get launched. And if you think that that doesn't happen, you'd be surprised how many people invest a lot of time and energy and money. I'm talking about months, if not years, and thousands of dollars. And they're never out. They never get launched because it's just too complicated and complex. So uh, another alternative to an actual membership plugin, believe it or not, is to use WordPress with a simple password protection plugin. Now inside of WordPress there's even um, a function where you can password protect a particular blog post. So if you were making a post uh, you could put a password on it. It's not the password is a, a general or what we call global passport, uh, password. That means it's the same for everyone. So if you password protect the page of your download links, let's say, the password would be ABC123 for everybody, right? So it's technically speaking not really a membership site. It's sort of like a poor man's membership site or a very, very quickie membership site in that once the password gets out, everybody's got it, right? So a WordPress plugin, uh, that actually has a membership component will be distinguished by the fact that everyone gets a different password, right? That's the main distinction between purely password protecting content and actually having different members. So, you know, John's password equals one, two, three, four, five, six, but Joan's password equals A, B, C, D, E, F. And if you want to, uh, you know, tell uh, tell John he's no longer welcome in your uh, membership site for whatever reason, you can instantly either delete his password or change his password, right? And now he can't get in. So this is, you know, easy to, easier to do when it's free than when it's paid, but they're very easy to hook in payment processors as well to be able to get money for that. My strong suggestion would be to stick with PayPal for a subscription-based or one-time payment. And the uh, WPMU Dev plugin for memberships that I talked about before works with, with uh, see the payola, unbelievable. I'm not looking at those words, so forgive me. I'm, I'm sure you're laughing while you're watching. I don't see it. Uh, the, the WPMU Dev membership plugin, for example, along with many others, ties into PayPal so that you can either get a one-time fee or a monthly subscription. And what we call monthly subscriptions, uh, we also call continuity. That's another way to generate revenue. So it really depends. Are you going to have uh, update your, your content constantly? then you might want to have a monthly subscription, a continuity subscription. People can even do weekly subscriptions or every three months or six months or every every year there are subscriptions. Or you could just say, well, there's a one-time fee. I have a membership site where I have all of my files. I don't really update them that much, but there it is. And if you want access to all of my stuff, it's one-time fee, $27, $97, $1,000, whatever it is. And these kind of membership plugins tie into your PayPal account and handle all of the screens, the shopping cart, and all that stuff. So you basically go into your back end of WordPress, your administration area, and you go to the configuration of the membership plugin, because remember, you can have more than one plugin in your membership, I'm sorry, in your WordPress. The calendar plugin, you know, I told you all those different plugins, the scrolling images uh, plugin. So you would go to your particular area of controlling your membership plugin, and then set up your member levels. You might have levels like free, and paid just to start with, right? 
you might also want to do something like gold, uh, you know, like they do like bronze, silver, and gold membership, right? So maybe the bronze equals the free member level, silver equals the, you know, the lower pay, uh, low ticket one, and gold equals the more expensive, you know, high ticket. This is up to you. Best thing to do is just go look at other membership sites and see how they do it because I don't know what niche you're in and there are so many different ways to do this, but I either recommend free versus paid to start with or three levels max. It gets kind of complicated when you go any farther than three levels. And be careful if you're a creative type because this is where people who are creative say, well, what I'll do is I'll have 17 different levels and here's how it all makes sense but you're making it too complicated. And what you need to do is get it going fast and easy, not overcomplicated with stuff that doesn't really have a major upside, but it does definitely have the potential for a big downside. So you might even want to start off with just a free membership site, and that's it. There is no paid level. You don't have to hook into a payment processor. Then maybe later on you can add a paid level, and then eventually add more levels when your customers say that that's a good idea. Uh, but free is super, super easy because any good free uh, low-end membership plugin will allow you to create free members. And all that means is that there's a login screen. You know, they register for their you know account. And then they have to log in with their username and password. Right? That's it. That's a membership site. It's free. The stuff is behind the wall, and you might say to yourself, well, why wouldn't I just, if, if it's only free stuff, and it's only one page of links, let's say it's downloads, I have 10 downloads or something, why would I even have a membership site at all? Why wouldn't I just put the links right on the main page by itself and just leave it hanging out there? Why, why do a whole membership site in the first place? Well, for several reasons. One, membership site has a higher perceived value, so you can say, hey, I'm even offering free membership to my site, you know, my10downloads.com, plus it also gives you the opportunity to add to it later. And the biggest, in my opinion, benefit is that you can build yourself an email list of the people who are grabbing your stuff. So if you decide not to do a membership site, even if it's a free membership site to access one page only, if you decide against it, then you're losing the chance to get a hold of this email list of people because people are just driving by, grabbing stuff, and not having to log in or anything. So how do you know who's there? How do you know how many members you have? You don't have any sense of community yet. And that's something I want to talk about a little bit later, content versus community. So I tried to spend a little bit of time on the tech stuff first. It may sound complicated, but all you, do, all you need to do is go to cPanel, Fantastico, WordPress, and then find a membership plugin for free. So far, you haven't spent more than 10 minutes and you haven't spent any money uh, and you can have it up and ready to go where you can join your own community or your own membership site it'll generate a username and password all that stuff and really really 10 minutes or less and no money if you do what I told you so let's get back to our slides for a second um, we're going to talk about how to make money from selling memberships and how to get free content uh, so really where I want to focus is what kind of stuff is inside of your membership site. Most of the time, people are giving you access to stuff, but I also say it's great if you can give access to people, meaning people to each other. So let's take a look at content first. You might want to put in uh, articles, downloads, videos, etc. This is content that is consumable. I go in there to get stuff, right? And you, you could say, well, why am I making a membership site if all it is is articles? I could just put the articles up and password protect those. That's true, but you really can't expand if you put just that global generic one password on your articles, right? And again, we also know you don't get the email list, so it's much, much more important to start thinking membership site even if you don't have that much to offer. Put yourself in the mindset of membership because you can grow it later. Believe me, if you just password protect your articles, you won't think I have a membership site, so you won't 
get all those new creative thoughts that come with having a membership site so you won't grow. You'll actually shut yourself down just by virtue of the fact that you didn't start one. Because not having one means you don't think of other things. Having one means you start to think about the things. Trust me. So this is the stuff part. What about the people part? Well, I love building community. I think community is vital, especially on the internet. We have high tech, but that's translated into low touch. And humans appreciate high touch. You know, we always like to meet in the town square and discuss business. In fact, the New York Stock Exchange, actually, if you know the story about it, started under a tree on Wall Street. People just started to gather together under this particular tree and start trading shares. And then eventually, when it rained, they said, maybe we should go in inside and do this in a room. And that's how the entire New York Stock Exchange started. So this is how we've always worked as humans, uh, eye to eye, belly to belly, right? Shake hands, look at each other. This technology comes along with the internet and allows us to work remotely from our, you know, kitchen table three o'clock in the morning in our underwear. Well, that's great, except we find ourselves at the kitchen table three o'clock in the morning in our underwear working. That's kind of weird, right? This is not how humanity has usually done business. Uh, you know, you want to trade a chicken for a goat, you go to the marketplace and look at the guy or the gal and you talk to him. So how can you bring some of that back with the internet? Well, you can start a community. So a community can be many things. It can be forums for people to discuss things. It can be member-to-member uh, -member messaging. You know, there's a lot of different ways that uh, people can communicate. They can, you can even set up your own members to do their own member blogging, right? So that members have their blogs on your site. That's a little bit more of an advanced you know, type of technology. But the point is, are you giving people access to stuff or are you giving people access to each other? Now, if you're giving people access to you, then you're kind of giving them access to both, to content that you create, but then also by being able to connect with you, uh, you can give them you know, community access, even if the community is just you. And I, I want you to start thinking about being a leader in your marketplace. I want you to start thinking about service. And that's actually slide this slide up for a second because this is some of the master class level stuff that I really like to get into. Many people say they deserve uh, success on the internet but if you look at the root of the word day is Latin and you know it comes from of and then the serve part is service so to deserve something it really means to be of service to somebody so if you feel like you deserve success after all this time you've been working on the internet I'll say to you well, if you feel you deserve success, who are you serving? Who have you been in service of all of this time? What is the community that you serve? Uh, so, for example, if you have a, you know, an interest in comic books, let's say you want to serve the comic book fan community, right? So, how would you do that? Well, you can make blog posts, videos, articles. Uh, you know stuff that they can download, uh, even links to uh, you know point to other links to news articles and things like that. Collect links. It's called curation, which is big today. Curation just means looking for other stuff and gathering links. A uh, little side note: that's how Yahoo started off. Uh, the two gentlemen who started Yahoo actually just had an email list circulating because when the internet was that young, you know now we have millions of web pages that come online all the time. But back then in the 90s. There were so few websites that every time a new website came online, it was newsworthy. So they had a little email newsletter telling people, hey, I found the new website. But eventually those links became a database, right? And now uh, they said, well, we need to house all this somewhere. So they started to put it at Yahoo. And Yahoo.com was one of, you know, one of the greatest uh, first level, first generation search engines of, of uh, you know, a collection of links directory of the Internet. So... You know, they curate it, and you can do that too. That's just a little side note about stuff, right? Uh, but if you go back to leading a community, I want you to start thinking of like uh, a shepherd. I think that's the way to spell it. Uh, or a, you know, per perhaps a pastor or community leader, you know, uh, or even a, a parent. These are all roles that people, you know, have when they serve a community. A shepherd has a flock. You know, a pastor 
has a church or, you know, a rabbi has a, a temple or something, parents for children, you know. So these are leadership roles, even uh, community leaders, like a, uh, a person who is a community civic leader, a block warden or something like that. So they have a community that they answer to. They have a community of people who need things. So if you can start to see yourself as a leader and servicing a community, instead of just a person out there who's a marketer and trying to get money for stuff, you know, you can really increase the amount of service that you give, value that you give, and that's when you'll start to deserve some success because, you know, you're actually creating value for other people. And that's really, you know, one of the big words, as we talked about before in the beginning, value. And value very often can come not just from stuff, but also from connection, communication, and of course, all that equals community. So hopefully that makes sense. And I, I want you to start thinking at this level. One other thing uh, that I want you to definitely remember is don't undervalue yourself. Sorry about that. Or, you know, what you can contribute. Because you'd be surprised. We usually undervalue ourselves and overestimate somebody else. But the truth is, you have a lot to share. And even if you know nothing about a particular thing, let's say you knew nothing about comic books. Well, if you wanted to serve that community, your commitment to that community, your, your level of service, your desire to serve, that's enough. That, that is enough to make it because you can want to serve better than anybody else. So there could be another guy who's you know, really, really good at comic books compared to you, but if he doesn't have the desire to serve, if he's not really hot about it and on it and, you know, activated and proactive, then you'll actually make a better community leader than he will because the knowledge doesn't mean anything if you're not using it to help and serve. So start to look at yourself as a valuable leader and not just as a person who's trying to make money online. That's a great masterclass distinction worth the time you invested already because that one distinction can, you know, not only make you a lot of money, but allow you to help a lot of other people. So how do you make money from selling memberships? Well, obviously you can sell, as we said, uh, you know, one-time fee or monthly fee. Uh, but the free content bit is, you know, goes back to community and um, stuff. Because not only can you get, as we've talked about on almost every masterclass, private label rights stuff, which means people write stuff and then you can put your name on it. That's why they call it private label rights. But you can also do content curation. And this is where the community comes in handy. The community can generate content itself. So we've been talking about content versus community, but user generated content. That's big. If you take a look at your, you know, your favorite discussion forum, how many posts in that discussion forum are made by the person who created the forum versus how many posts are there made by the members themselves, right? So the members in making, you know, in having discussions, they are generating the content for that site. So that site might have 10,000 pages, but it's from the users discussing things and creating the content. So the community itself can be content. So that's another great way to get free content. So you can look for private label rights. Let's say you wanted to start a golf community site. You could find, you know, just Google PLR golf articles. And then you, not gold, golf. You can have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, knowledgeable information in there that you found through private label rights. You put your name on it, put it in there. You could also curate some content. You might want to find a plugin like for, let's call it a directory plugin, or just a bookmarks, you know, links kind of plugin, so that you can put a hundred different golf links, say that's a valuable service. Yeah, it's public knowledge, but you're cutting down the time that somebody else had to look that stuff up. You're saving them time. I'm sorry, that's valuable, right? So that doesn't mean, you might say, well, why should I just put a bunch of links behind a, a wall and then call it a membership site? Hey, did you take the time to find them? Okay then that may be a convenience for somebody else. So again, don't undervalue yourself. Plus, you can have community content, user-generated content. These are some other great ways to be able to get 
content into your site or, or generate it from within your site that people will find valuable and pay money for. So how do you get people lined up to join your membership site? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. Obviously, the first way to do it is to have lots and lots of value, right? Another way is to put some of the stuff outside for free. And I mean no opt-in free, right? And if, you know, I get this question all the time. Well, certainly if I give away my stuff, why would anybody want to pay for it? And, and I guess it's a valid, valid question. It comes from the physical world. Well, if I sell apples and I give you an apple, then I don't have the apple anymore. But uh, when you give away content, content is infinitely duplicatable. That means, you know, if you have a warehouse full of apples and you sell or give away all the apples, your warehouse is empty. But content, I can give you my content and you have it now, but I still have it too. See, it's clonable, it's, it's copyable, it's duplicatable. So you don't lose when you give it away. But the more important thing is that value drives desire and consumption. It doesn't limit it. Now, occasionally, um, people will get some of your free stuff and then not proceed. But the, the end up is that if you have more people getting your free stuff, you're going to increase the amount of people who want more stuff. And that's why you lead with your best stuff. A lot of people make the mistake, if they do ever get it, that they should be giving away some stuff and they don't get trapped in that. I'm not going to give it away. Nobody will buy it. If you can escape that trap, the next trap people fall in is they say, well, I'll give stuff away, but it'll just be my least valuable stuff. Wrong again, because that's where people see your least valuable stuff and they say, oh, this stuff isn't really that good. So why should I opt in or pay or whatever when clearly the, the level of quality isn't that great? So you always lead with your best stuff. There's a saying, you should move the free line, push the free line. That means something that somebody else would sell for $27, you give away for free. That will get people lined up to get the rest of your stuff because they say, look, if their free stuff is this good, man, I wonder how great their other stuff is going to be. And of course, you can always generate more stuff all kinds of ways. So one other way to do it that gets people lined up is to build a list first, then launch your membership site. And we talked about building a list in a previous masterclass. There's plenty of information about list building out there. But build a, an email list of people who are interested in whatever it is. So maybe we start a blog, an actual content blog. I'm not talking about turning your blog into a membership site. I'm saying just start a good old-fashioned blog where you start posting information about comic books and have a little uh, sidebar opt-in form. Opt-in means for people to subscribe and use something, you know, an autoresponder, uh, like AWeber or something that collects uh, email addresses, then over time you'll have a large net number of names that you can then say, hey gang, I'm considering doing a membership site. What other kinds of stuff would you like? Uh, you can, you know, start to work on it and build up the anticipation, count down to it, hey, I'll be, I'll be opening my, my new membership site in 30 days, in 28 days, in 20 days. So you can really have people lined up to want to be in it. But of course, nothing happens without delivering value. So worry about value, and the monetization will take care of itself. If you worry about monetizing, meaning if you're worrying about getting money so badly that you neglect adding value, then it doesn't matter how hard you work on getting money, there's no value there. So people aren't going to line up for it. So. How to keep your members month after month? Well, you know, there's something that you need to understand about membership sites. It's something called attrition. Attrition just means you lose people. In fact, you will have a uh, customer lifetime. 
that means that your average customer stay with you or average member lifetime might be you know three months or something uh, and we're, we're talking about paid but you can also you know use this for free so if it's a free membership site you want to track how often people are logging in and maybe if they're not logging in you might want to email them updates that gets people to log back in but you also in a paid membership situation you're going to have people eventually canceling your members their membership that's just how it works it happens isn't it doesn't mean you're a bad person it doesn't mean you're a bad business person uh, it just means that certain people cycle out and that's just what happens so your increase in membership percentage should always be higher than that of of your attrition rate so for example if you had 100 members of your membership site and every month you lost three members in january three members quit in february three members quit in march three members quit then that would mean that you have an average of a 3% attrition rate every month. Well, that in itself is not a bad thing as long as your increase in membership is at least 3% a month or higher. So if it's lower than that, either 2%, 1%, or no growth, then sooner or later you're going to just lose all of your members. Three leave in January, now you're down to 97. Three more leave in February, now you're down to 94. Three more leave in March, now you're down to 91. You see how you're not replacing them? There's a hole in the bucket, but there's no more water coming into the bucket. So it's just leaking out. But if you lose three out of every 100, 3%, but you gain 10, well, then you still have a net gain of seven, and that's okay. So they cancel each other out. So always try to keep your increase in membership higher than your attrition rate, right? Let's take a look at our bullets once again. This last bullet is how to keep your members month after month. So I just have a couple other comments about that. Uh, one of the things that I try to do with my community site, and I probably don't do enough, is to communicate. And don't just communicate from yourself. Also allow your members to communicate with each other. I'm even beginning in my um, membership site, we're starting to notify members of the successes of other members. And you can take a look right here uh, at our membership site marketer link. This is our community site. And we have our uh, community members. You know, everybody can connect with everybody, do, uh, you know, private messaging and everything. Also have a sort of like a live Twitter feed kind of thing where people can see what each other are doing. So I'm trying to actually pull uh, wins from our members and post them up on the leaderboard. We're eventually going to be emailing people links to, hey, so-and-so just had this great success. So... You could do interviews with your uh, members, for example, and then post those interviews to everyone else. You can allow uh, discussions in a forum to happen and then communicate to your membership. Hey, there was this great discussion on comic book superheroes yesterday. Go check it out. Here's the link. You know, So communication is a great way to keep people involved. In fact, the more people put down roots, the less likely they are to leave. And you can see that some people have been members of discussion forums for over 10 years. And the more posts they put in there, the more friends they meet in there, why would they want to go? So try to make it, as they say, this is a funny word for it, but make your site as sticky as possible. A lot of people's first uh, foray into membership sites are just, you know, they uh, grab a couple files, they put them in a download area, and they say, here's my membership site. And yeah, that's okay to start with. But eventually, you want to really, really try to increase that value and keep your members re retained by delivering as much value as possible. And the best tool I can tell you to use to find out what kind of value you should be delivering is to ask questions. You know, you can do surveys and polls. And of course, my favorite, develop personal relationships with the people in your members membership. I speak to VIPs and Market Link members every day of the week, at least five days a week, sometimes seven. Uh, we talk on Skype, uh, and some of them I, I really I learn from them. That they're they're cool to talk to, you know. The, these are people that I learn from and and help me benefit the whole community as well. So, if you don't just want to have a wall around a bunch of stuff, right? If you really want to truly build a business, then build a list, of course, as a as a list builder, and in your community site, build a community. Doesn't mean you can't have stuff, but definitely build a community. And treat it like your family. Ask questions, make sure everybody's okay, do they need anything. Be of service 
and you'll be able to deserve that success that you've been looking for. So that's our membership sites masterclass for today. And of course, as I always say, the most important thing to do is to get started. Done is good. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to get it going. You don't have to get it perfect. So go to cPanel, install a Fantastico WordPress install. Go find a free membership plugin. Um, you can always go to a site like Fiverr and have somebody help you or Odesk. These are outsourcing sites. But don't go off half-cocked, as they say, and just start installing a membership site without a real understanding of who you're going to serve, is it going to be free or paid, answer those questions that we covered earlier. And when in doubt, leave it out. I'd rather you wait three or six months to do a membership site and do it right than to start one that just dangles and, and is unfinished because you didn't think it out farther enough, you know, far enough, and then you, you don't give yourself a win. Instead, you give yourself a loss and you feel bad about it. So membership sites can be you know, pretty big, uh, audacious, ambitious projects. But if you have a community that you serve and you're ready to serve them every day, I know you can do it. So thanks very much for participating. You can always find me on the, online. Just Google Sterling Valentine, and I'll be happy to have you any way I can. Take care.